In this video, we'll talk about constellations. A constellation is a group of stars occupying some small portion of the celestial sphere and appearing to form some kind of pattern. Now, in short, that's a group of stars forming some kind of pattern in the sky. Have you ever looked up at the sky and wondered, wait, these stars form some shape like a scorpion or a lion or something like that? This is basically that. Now, we have 88 approved constellations by the International Astronomical Union, and we look at a few of them now. Look at this picture of the night sky. What do you see here? Can you spot a constellation here? If you're wondering where to look, I'm talking about this region. Can you see some brighter stars forming some kind of shape there? Okay, let me join the dots. Now, can you see something? This pattern is called the Great Bear. Obviously, the lines between the stars is just imaginary, but this pattern is called the Great Bear, also called the Ursa Major or the Big Dipper, or in India, it's called the Saptarishi. All these are just names for the same constellation. And uh, if you're wondering how the name Saptarishi came, this has seven stars, and we know that in Sanskrit, Sapta is basically seven. So that's where that name came from. There's something else which is also pretty interesting with this constellation. If you draw a line like this, you would end up at another very bright star, and that is the pole star. The pole star is one of the most important stars in terms of navigation or in terms of re as a reference in the celestial sky. Okay, have you ever thought that this looks like a kite? I actually personally think that this looks like a kite. If you don't see it, let me show you. If I drew those two sticks, this looks perfectly like a kite, right? Okay, now let's move to the next constellation, Cassiopeia. This in India is called Sharmishta, and this is made of five stars. It has a W-like shape or an M-like shape, depending on how you want to think about it. And this also has in its vicinity the pole star. And it's very interesting how this is related to the pole star. Have a look. These two stars here, if I connect them with a line, and I drew the perpendicular bisector to that line, that would point straight at the pole star. Interesting, right? Okay, next we've got the Orion. In India, it's called the Murg Nakshatra. It's made of seven stars, and these three stars in the middle, they have something interesting. If you follow the line of those three stars, you'd end up in another bright star. Nope, this is not the pole star this time. This is another star called Sirius or Vyad. Vyad in India, and Sirius is the Western name. Okay, the next one is called Scorpio. This looks like a scorpion if you have a good imagination. Yeah. In India, it's called Vrishchik. And it's seen more in the southern hemisphere sky, but we do get to see it for a short period in the northern hemisphere as well. This one has 10 to 12 stars, and there's one very bright star. It's called Antares in the west, and in India, it's called Jeshta. Okay, so those were a few constellations. Now let's get into the topic of zodiac signs, or what we often call as sun signs. Uh, to understand this, let's get into the history of how this whole thing came up to be. So let's say this is the sun, and this is the earth revolving around the sun in some path like that. Okay, that's the setting. Now let's remove these labels so that we can talk about more stuff. Okay, so the earth would move in this direction, right? And let's say for a month, it, it has moved that much. And during that one month, uh, behind the sun, as, as seen from the earth, behind the sun, there's a constellation. Let's say that constellation looks like a lion. And if that constellation looks like a lion, then we would call it the Leo constellation. So what ancient people did is during this entire month for which this Leo constellation was behind the sun, they called it the Leo month. And that's how you got this Leo sun sign. Okay, let me give you another example. Let's say after a while the earth has moved a little bit, and now for one month the earth is along this portion. And along this portion, right behind the sun, there is some other constellation, and this one seems to look like a scorpion. And so we call this constellation Scorpio. So for this entire month on earth, that month is going to be known as the Scorpio month. 
That's how these sun signs came into place. They were actually months for which a particular constellation was behind the sun. Let's say in some other month, some other portion of the orbit was being covered by the earth. And during this month, we saw some other shape constellation. We would then call that month by the name of that constellation. Now, so the entire one year was split up into 12 regions, 12 portions, and that was corresponding to the 12 constellations, which gave 12 months and which gave 12 sun signs. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you.